What's going on, y'all? I am Adam from Texas Garage, and this week we are driving the 2020 Hyundai Sonata Hybrid. Let's get into it. So first of all, the Sonata is one of Hyundai's most popular and longest running models they have. This is the eighth generation Sonata, and we made a whole video about the all new Sonata uh, during its launch in Arizona. I'll leave that up in the iCards or down in the description if you're interested in seeing that. But before we jump into this specific model, let's talk about the different models and trims Hyundai offers with the Sonata. Starting off with the different models of Sonata, first you have the base regular Sonata, then you have the hybrid Sonata, which is what we're driving here. And then you have the plug-in hybrid Sonata. Now, again, I drove the regular gasoline Sonata back in Arizona during the launch. I haven't driven the plug-in hybrid, but this is the hybrid. And this is what we'll be focusing on for today's review. So trim levels offered in the Sonata hybrid include the base, which is the blue. Then you have the SEL and then the Limited, which is what we're driving here. And I'll get into all the pricing differences towards the end of this video, but first, let's take a look at the exterior design here. Then we'll pop the trunk, take a look at the cargo space, pop the hood, take a look at the engine, get inside, take a look at the interior, we'll drive it, see what that's about, and then we'll start wrapping it up. All right, and starting off with the exterior design, this obviously carries that new exterior design language that Hyundai introduced with the all new Sonata. It is longer, lower, wider, and greener than any Sonata before it. This is the hybrid and the hybrid gets near perfect proportions for a sleek, seductive silhouette, a coupe-like design. And there's a lot of really cool features in this design that will pass over a lot of people. We talked a lot about them during our initial review of the Sonata, but we'll touch on a couple of them here in this review as well. But the hybrid is definitely a sleeker design with an active air flap and an improved aerodynamics from the rear spoiler. And this surpasses the competition with a 0.24 coefficient of drag. Right up front, you do get those LED headlamps. Nice stylized design. You still get the extra LED strip above the headlamp that seamlessly flows into the body lines. A really cool touch from Hyundai here. Here on this Limited, you get a chrome grille. You also get a seamless hood design, which again is one of those things that I think passes over a lot of people in design. It definitely takes a skill of craftsmanship to make a hood design like this and still make it an affordable vehicle. And if you don't really know what I'm talking about there, it's the hood that goes all the way down to the grill. Usually on cars, you'll have the bumper piece that goes across here and connects, and the hood will actually start way up here. It's cheaper and easier to manufacture vehicles like that, but Hyundai wanted this nice, sleek look, and they designed it to go all the way down to the grill, which again is a nicer presentation, but also much more expensive to build it that way. And Hyundai's achieved this with still keeping the price pretty low. Next up on this limited trim, you do have the solar roof panel. And not only does it look cool, it actually does function well. So when you can get free energy from the sun, the Sonata Hybrid will take it. Converting sunlight into electricity, the roof panel recharges the batteries, generating enough electric power to increase driving range by about two miles a day. And that's about 700 additional miles per year. Along the side, you really get that coupe sense from the body lines. You have that chrome strip that wraps around the entire cabin of the car. You do have side mirrors with mounted LED turn signal indicators. They are also heated side mirrors here on this limited trim. The wheels here are a really nice 17 inch wheel with a very efficient design and running Michelin tires. Around the rear here, you do have the LED tail lamps that do stretch across the entire bottom. You do have the integrated spoiler with extra little air fins to help with aerodynamic. You can see the Sonata nameplate there on the back and the hybrid badge there on the right hand side as well. And you'll notice we don't have any exhaust ports visible here, but the regular gas version does have some pretty cool exhaust ports if that's what you're into. All right, and before we jump into the trunk, let's actually talk about the overall dimensions of this vehicle. Your wheelbase is 111.8 inches. 
Total length is 192.9 inches. Your overall width is 73.2 inches and overall height is 56.9 inches. All right, so back to the trunk here. You do have a pretty cool design for the pop. You don't have a button down here. There's not a button right here. If you do wait long enough, it will automatically pop for you, but that's not the coolest part. The button is actually hidden in the top of the H here. So if you push that button, it will pop seamlessly integrates into the trunk, very hard to find. I always thought that was pretty cool. This isn't the first generation of Sonata that they implemented that, but it is a cool design. Again, with the trunk closed and the key in your pocket, and you wait long enough back here if you've got your hands full, no need to kick underneath the bumper and find that sweet spot. This thing will just pop for you. It can be a bit annoying if you're standing back here or walking from one side of the car to the other and it just pops because you passed by. That doesn't happen all too often and it does give you those beeps to let you know what it's about to do, but it can throw you off sometimes. Now focusing on inside the trunk, you have 16 cubic feet of cargo space. We actually did fit quite a bit of stuff uh, in here and it fits the camera equipment just fine. All right, and with that, let's get that hood popped and check out what's under the hood. All right, so under the hood is a two liter GDI Atkinson cycle, dual overhead cam, 16 valve, inline four cylinder engine. This pushes 150 horsepower, 139 foot pounds of torque. The electric motor output is 39 kilowatts, 51 horsepower and 151 foot pounds of torque. And you do have a 270 volt lithium ion polymer battery. Altogether combined, this produces 192 horsepower. It's also matched up to a traditional six speed automatic transmission, which is one of the great things about this hybrid setup here. Fuel economy wise on this limited, you get 47 miles per gallon combined. That's 45 miles per gallon city, 51 on the highway. And of course, we'll talk more about what I've been averaging here when we get to the driving portion of this video. It also does have a 13.2 gallon fuel tank. And when they dropped it off to me, it showed almost 500 miles on a full tank. So all of the Sonata hybrids have the same basic setup that you see here, but the base trim, the blue, actually gets better fuel economy numbers. And that's down to some weight savings and extra stuff that you don't get that you would get in this Limited. All right, and with that, let's jump inside, start taking a look at the interior, starting with the rear seats. All right, so let's talk about these rear seats, starting with the room that you get here. This is one of the biggest interiors that you can get in this class, and it really shows back here with lots of feet room, lots of knee room, and lots of head room. I'm 6'1", I'm a bigger guy, and I definitely fit in here, no problems. The seats and materials back here are really nice and comfortable as well, just as they are in the front, and we'll talk more about those in just a second. We also have these really nice sunshades on the windows back here, which is nice. You do get your own AC vents. We have a USB port back here for charging. We also have a pull down armrest with two integrated cup holders, no trunk pass through, but these are 2040 split rear seats that can be folded down for enlarging that cargo volume. So pretty simple, pretty basic rear seats, but they are nice and comfortable and they do fit a family of five really well. And we definitely utilize that throughout this week. But let's uh, get out of here, jump in the front seats and really get this interior rolling. All right guys, so climbing in these front seats, you can definitely see this limited trim is a nice place to be. We have nice leather seats with both a heated and cooled function. The driver's seat here is an eight-way power adjustable with a power lumbar. The passenger seat is four-way power adjustable. And you do get memory settings for these seats and these side mirrors. We also have a nice leather wrap dash here with white contrast stitching, really nice. We also have a leather wrapped steering wheel with paddle shifters. And that is also a heated steering wheel. We do have the Bose premium audio system in here with 12 speakers and we get LED interior lights with 64 color ambient lighting. So the driver information display and gauge cluster is a 
fully digital gauge cluster, 12.3 inches, something I really like. And of course this conforms to different driving modes that you put it in, including a special look for sport mode. You can also thumb through pages for driving information, including your cruise settings, your route settings, then you have some driver info, including fuel economy, trip distance, driving style, your attention level, your tire pressure, engine temp, and your drive mode. We also get a color heads up display that can show you quite a bit of information. Of course, right now we're just seeing the miles per hour. But when you turn your cruise functions on and different things like that, you will get more information about the driving of this vehicle. Our infotainment display is a 10.25 inch fully touch display, very responsive. We do have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto integrations. And as far as layout and design goes, I always like the Hyundai system, but this one looks really good. You get a lot of your hybrid information here, including your energy flow, something that the kids love watching. You can see your solar roof information. You can see your average economy and your electric motor use. You also have Blue Link, which is not set up for me, but I have had Blue Link before in my own Sonata, and it's a cool system to have. There's lots of great technology that goes into this, including starting your car remotely, making sure your doors are locked remotely, but you can also do a lot more there. Definitely worth checking out. We're not gonna dive too much into that right here. You also get a full 360 camera display here. For your backup camera, you can engage it just by hitting the camera button too. So if you're parking, you know you're right in the spots. This obviously isn't a huge vehicle and hard to park, but it's always nice to see what's around you when you are parking. And of course you can thumb through here and change your views as you wish. You also have a 12 volt, 180 watt accessory port here. You have a USB port for interfacing with your infotainment system and a charging USB port. You also have a wireless charger here. So it will wirelessly charge your phone as you put it down there, but you don't get the wireless CarPlay. So if you have it wirelessly charging, um, you're not gonna have it plugged in. You also don't get USB type C ports, which would be nice here but you only get the USB type A. Your electronic transmission is controlled by buttons here on the console. You have your park, your reverse, your neutral, and your drive. Moving down a bit further from that, you have your park sensors button, your 360 camera view button. You have your drive mode select here, and you have an auto hold button. You can also see that you have two cup holders with a little slot for a phone. That's nice, especially if you have a case on your phone, but if you don't, it will get banged around as you're driving, which I don't like. I usually still just throw my phone into the cup holder. The center console is nice and big, and I got it full of junk and masks, kind of standard 2020 stuff. And from there, I think it's time to uh, get this thing going. So let's put it into gear, start driving. We'll talk about some of the driving tech in here, as well as just the driving feel and what I think about it in that case. So. Uh, Let's get going. All right, so first of all, let's talk about some of the tech in this vehicle and we'll get to showing a little bit of that uh, as we drive. But you do have a blind spot view monitor. You do have lane keep assist, lane follow assist. You do have a driver attention warning system. You have a forward collision avoidance assist with pedestrian detection, smart cruise with stop and go, parking collision avoidance assist, rear occupant alert, rear cross traffic, front and rear parking sensors, and a highway drive assist. And all of these are great features to have for day-to-day uh, -day driving, for family driving. I really have no complaints with any of them. I think they all work really well, especially those driving assist features. I think these are some of the best in the segments. But of course you do want to drive your own car. And although this is a hybrid, it is a fun car to drive. We are in sport mode. And this car has been designed to be smoother, to be more agile. It's a wider stance and it feels very planted. You can come around corners 
pretty hard. There's a little bit of body roll, and this is a little bit heavier than the gas model, but uh, you still have really good feel going through corners, good acceleration coming out. Now, when we talk about competition, you'll see that uh, some of the other competition has more overall power than this does, but this thing does deliver its power really well. The brakes have good feel. They're a little sensitive. They're hard to get used to at first, but uh, they have plenty of stopping power, that's for sure. And again, you can come straight out of those corners with some power and you get that good torque. And it's just a good feeling car. Now, of course, it's a hybrid. You want to get the best fuel efficiency out of it. It's not all about the power. So we can put it into eco mode. It quietens down. It's a very comfortable vehicle to drive. It's a very quiet vehicle to drive. It does have some awkward noises at times. If you have the radio off and you're driving slowly, you can definitely hear that uh, electric whine from the engine. I don't know if it's an artificial sound that's being pumped in or um, pumped out of the vehicle, but it's definitely an interesting sound, a little bit different than most of the hybrid or electric vehicles that I've heard before, but obviously nothing concerning. Again, as a family man and somebody that normally drives quite a bit of distance daily back and forth to an office pre-COVID, I think this is a really great and comfortable vehicle, great for the family, really smooth and easy to drive, lots of great safety features, really good fuel economy. Now, as I've been showing the screens, you'll probably notice uh, the fuel economy doesn't seem that good. When we're doing these reviews, you definitely get a uh, bad fuel economy because of letting it sit in idle, doing some harder driving and stuff like that. I'll definitely reset those numbers and do a fuel economy run. As during our quick look video, Brian asked us what our average fuel economy was in here or what we can actually expect for real world driving. We'll definitely check that out in just a second. All right, we reset our fuel economy. We're gonna do some uh, city driving, some back country road driving, and some highway driving, and then we'll uh, come back and look at what we've averaged to get a better sense of what this hybrid can actually do. One of the other features you also get here are these turn signal monitors. So as you turn your turn signal on, you can see uh, what's going on in that lane beside you. Now it doesn't know if you're actually making a turn or changing lane, so it always comes on. But it's not as distracting as Honda does sometimes with using the actual infotainment system display. And it's not the first time we've seen this. We've seen this in uh, a couple other Kia and Honda vehicles, but it's pretty cool. So while this isn't an autonomous vehicle, it is one of the best driving assist vehicles uh, definitely in the market. It definitely keeps you in the lanes. Uh, the radar guided cruise control keeps you behind a vehicle, stop and go. And I've driven several miles in this vehicle with barely touching the steering wheel definitely up on the highway, but it'll take the curves and everything just fine. Really great system. Again, not autonomous. You don't want to completely take your eyes off the road or keep your hands on the steering wheel, but for that assisted driving, it is fantastic. All right, and after the reset, as you can see, uh, the fuel economy is at 50.5 miles to the gallon. Again, we did some backcountry road driving drove into the city, did a little bit of city driving, got up on the highway, did some highway driving, and all in all is about 20 miles, so not completely representative of a full week of driving, but I definitely wanted to figure out those numbers uh, on a more consistent basis, and that 50.5 is very in line with what the uh, EPA standards are, so I'm happy with that number. You can definitely get that a lot lower if you're a lot harder on the vehicle, again, letting it idle more, things like that. You can probably get it a lot higher if you stay in eco mode and you're doing more city driving or not hitting that accelerator pedal quite as hard. But all in all, I do think it is a very efficient vehicle. So I have given a lot of praise to this car and I really do like it. If you had to nitpick on something, that might be the price. So let's pull over and talk about the price of this thing and the competition. All right guys, so let's quickly talk about the price and competition here and then we'll wrap the video up. 
First off, let's talk about the bass Sonata, the non-hybrid Sonata. You can pick one of those up, base price at $23,600. Now this is the limited trim hybrid and the limited trim non-hybrid is $33,500. As far as the hybrid trims go, the blue has a base price of $27,750. The SEL has a base price of $29,900. And the Limited has a base price of $35,300. Now this Limited that we're sitting in here doesn't have a lot of options. Really the only optional extra that we have are carpeted floor mats. And the total MSRP here is $36,430. Now, 36 grand for a nice big hybrid vehicle that has all the tech that this has and nice leather. That's not that bad of a price, but for a Hyundai Sonata, that might be a little bit higher than you were expecting to pay. But overall, I think it's pretty much worth it. Other vehicles that you could look at include the Kia Optima Hybrid, which is basically the same setup as this with a Kia body and Kia badge. You could also look at the Honda Accord Hybrid. Now that one is actually a little bit less efficient than this, but it has more power, but it also has a CVT transmission. And like I said, the automatic transmission in this one, I think is one of the things that gives it a win on driving dynamics. And then of course you have the Toyota Camry Hybrid, which is a little bit more efficient than this and has more power than this but also has a CVT transmission. So all in all, I think that all of those options are really good. I wouldn't necessarily pick one over the other. Definitely test drive what you like. You can base it on warranty. You can base it on name brand. But me, myself, I like the style of this thing. I like the Hyundai nameplate. I like the warranty that they give. They give a really great warranty. And this is probably one of my favorite in this class. With that, let's jump out and wrap this thing up. All right, guys, well, it's been a hot one today, so let's start to wrap this video up. All in all, I really like the Sonata. If you've seen really any of my content, uh, I'm always praising Hyundai. I think they're a great brand. They make great vehicles, and the Sonata is no different. I actually even own a 2013 Sonata, and again, if you watch that other Sonata video, you'll understand why I like it so much. But all my bias aside, I think this is a really great vehicle, a great hybrid. I personally wouldn't opt for the hybrid. I would just get the regular gasoline engine. It still gives you good enough fuel economy for me, although I do like all the extra tech that you do get in this hybrid. So like I already mentioned with the competition, I do think this is one of the better ones you can get. I really like the design. I like all the technology and it's at a good price. So if you're looking at getting one, definitely test drive it, check it out, and I would most definitely recommend it. So guys, as always, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the Sonata and the Sonata Hybrid. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. All right, guys, you didn't think that you were gonna get all the way through this video without a little bit of a pitch. If you're still here and watching after that outro, I really appreciate you sticking around. But I definitely wanna take this time to let you guys know about TXGarage.com. If you haven't already, you should definitely go check out TXGarage.com. We have a lot of great contributors there and we're writing about car reviews, car news, and event coverage, and just some other cool car-related stuff. And of course, we also publish all of our review videos there. So definitely go check out txgarage.com. We also have a second channel here on YouTube that you should definitely go check out. On that channel, we cover news and events, but we also do quick look videos on all of the cars that we're reviewing. And those quick look videos are really there to show you guys what we're driving and get your feedback on what you would like to see during the full review. So if you're a fan of the channel, you like these kind of reviews, but you want more input,
put into what we actually talk about here, definitely go check out those quick look videos and add your input before we do the review. And we'll add that into the review and give you a shout out. One last thing is we have a Locals community page. Locals is sort of like Patreon, where we can get a community together and show some extra footage, extra behind the scenes, extra talk specifically to you guys. It is free to sign up, so I encourage you to sign up. We have a nice little niche community there, but we would love more people to come in and join. With that, I promise that's the end, guys. So I hope you did enjoy. Thanks for watching.